Hello, my soccer universe, and welcome to the Bundesliga review for this weekend. Bundesliga in Austria and in Germany, and boy, were there many goals scored. Um, I actually watched the uh, um, Saturday afternoon uh, conference where they switched. It was only four teams, but given that there were uh, four of the top five teams involved, I was a a actually quite, quite intrigued by that. And boy, especially in the first half, so many goals scored. They were almost at four goals per game at halftime. That was an amazing part. Um, and also, I mean, amazing or absolutely ridiculous what Bayern uh, did to Stuttgart. That was uh, something else. Being a man down and a man down scoring four goals. And Lewandowski well on track of beating the 30, uh, the 40 goal mark of Gerd Müller, which is another Im improbable thing. The other superstar, uh, Haaland, a uh, safe store Dortmund, who almost fell to Köln um, and poor Köln is now in the promotion relegation playoff uh, because all the other teams down there uh, have saved themselves a little bit and so with the 2-2 against Dortmund Köln is in a way on one of the losers of this match day Dortmund of course being another one as well um, I am wearing Hertha because as we'll see Hertha having a huge win also uh, this weekend and also lots of goals scored in Austria, but the drama for the last uh, spot in the playoff where three, te three teams were competing for two spots, not only goals, but incredible scenes at in stoppage time. There were so many ways that this could have changed. Uh, it was also rather unbelievable. I'm actually a little bit sorry, I probably wouldn't have seen it live because, because I, I definitely would have watched Serie A. But I definitely had to watch the highlights of that because that was unbefreaking livable. Um, I will do this second in Austria, but the, uh, the drama in there was just something uh, that beggared belief. And the only thing I have, have, have to say that didn't make it uh, even greater is that the three teams involved are really small, small teams in the overall. I mean, I don't want to say village team because all the teams are in, in cities, but I think none of the cities have more than 10,000 people live, living there. So, I mean, that's the kind of proportion we're talking about there. But it was exciting. It, it, it must have been really exciting, especially if you're a fan of one of these. I would say we'll start in the Bundesliga where uh, Friday evening Leipzig only got a 1-0 uh, win uh, through a sub it's a goal right after the half. It should have been more. Um, I think the most uh, notable thing is that the new Bielefeld coach uh, became Hoffenheim Heim coach uh, in the early 2010s and his assistant was Nagelsmann. So they met here again. And then we already at Bayern Stuttgart. Uh, that was a game for the first 50 minutes. I mean, you really thought that game was even. Alfonso Davis gets it off and Stuttgart actually had a good chance through Kalajic and, and so on. So, so you really thought with a man down, Stuttgart might actually be, be able to pull out something. Like on Most Le Leipzig fans thought, hmm, maybe Bayern is tripping up and we'll see after the break. They played, uh, it's the top duel, Le 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 Leipzig Bayern. So they have a chance of really putting Bayern into second place in that one. Yeah, but um, Messias, uh, Gnabry, Lewandowski and Müller and Sané had definitely to say some, something about it. Uh, the first goal by Lewandowski came in the 17th, where, you know, the Stuttgart defense just uh, did not take him seemingly seriously enough, which I find rather remarkable. Then in the 22nd, a wonderfully played goal. Uh, um, it was Sané, Müller, Sané ru runs back and then doesn't shoot on goal but lays it back to Gnabry who, who, who can put it in that a really wonderfully played goal. It was not the only wonderfully played goal uh, this afternoon even. And then right off the kick of Stuttgart loses the ball, Thomas Müller crosses the box, Le Lewandowski heads one in. Completely unmarked. 3-0 after 23 minutes, after 11 minutes of being down a man, they score three goals. I mean, this is toying with the opposition and I know Stuttgart is an open team, Stuttgart is a fun team to watch most of the time, but this was this just beggared belief on so many accounts. Uh, and then Lev Lewandowski adds a third and he should have had a fourth or a fifth also. Uh, unbelievable. I said it before, he has now 35 goals, he is well on track 
uh, of beating Gerd Müller's 40-goal record. Uh, I think Gerd Müller's overall scoring re record is rather safe. I think he has 365 goals, and Levon Lewandowski is now second there, and there he has about 100 goals to go. So maybe that, that, that was safe. But a single-season record, pff, that's gone, I would say. But still a few games to be played. Probably the most entertaining game was Eintracht Frankfurt gegen Union Berlin. That was one that was a very clear scoreline. And also uh, the other thing I have, 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 have to say about the Bundesliga conference that, that, that I watched. Um, I am really looking at uh, Frankfurt and Wolfsburg jerseys and I'm about to get, although it will not be cheap, the two jerseys that they played this weekend because I really want to have them. I like both of them very, 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 very much. The game started out really well. Second minute, Kostic plays to Andre Silva. Uh, a minute after, this was in the second minute, in the first minute, Odio Berlin should have already scored. This game was open and already the first game, I think, it was a 3-3 draw, uh, completely un 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 undeserved by Frankfurt. However, um, Union comes back in the seventh, they get the equalizer, which should not have, have been uh, given because Ryerson clearly puts his uh, foot into the um, uh, thigh. Uh, of the Frankfurt player uh, bleeding and, 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 and so on, that this wasn't called, called, called even VAR for a foul. I don't get it. And then Union Berlin was, had the better chances. However, they shoot themselves in the foot in the 35th minute. Uh, Andrich gets the ball and wants to play it back to his goalkeeper, who is out of goal and is slipping. And so the ball goes slowly, slowly, slowly into the net. No one can catch it. A crazy, crazy own goal. And then two goals, you will not see better played goals. Uh, the first one be, uh, by Kostic in the thir 39th. He runs together with Silva. The defense for Union is basically converging on the Kostic. He plays the ball to Silva, who stops it once. The goalkeeper comes out, all the defenders rush back to him, and Silva doesn't take the shot. He plays it back to Kostic, who, who, who can pull the net. What a wonderfully played goal. And then uh, Kamada assists Silva with another wonderfully played goal. That was up there with, with, with the Bayern goal. Really, really well played. However, we were not done at halftime because it was 4-1. We had in stoppage time, Kruse pulls one back. It's 4-2. And then only on Berlin actually was threatening to make it 4-3. And only when Chandler in the 92nd makes it 5-2. Uh, the game is done and does it. But this was a crazy game that could have ended, I mean, 7-6, you name it, that could, could, could have been a scoreline. Another crazy game, Köln Dortmund. Dortmund came out storming. Uh, from the first minute on, Köln could not get out of their own uh, defensive third in, uh, in, 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 in a way, and in the third minute, Holland already scores. It was just funny because they moved from uh, Köln to Frankfurt, where, where the goal goal was scored, and uh, as soon as that was done, Holland scores the 1-0 for Dor Dortmund. Uh, a little bit luck maybe uh, controlling the ball, but then very well done. And then Dortmund, I mean, the next uh, 10, 15, 15 minutes, Dortmund could have added two or three more. They were dead, uh, dead dominant. However, it didn't last long. I call fought themselves back, and they get a rather justified penalty. The Duda in the 35th converts. And then, uh, actually, it was Kern. I mean, still, first half, same, same picture, but it was Kern that fought themselves back in, into the game. And actually, uh, in the middle of second half, really had control of the game. Jakobs get a well-deserved 2-1 uh, lead for Kern, which was so not in the cards for, from the get-go. The problem is that, seemingly, they then fell into the trap of hanging back, hanging back, Dortmund exerting a, a, lot, a lot of pressure. And in the 9-9-9-9 minute, uh, um, Holland equalizes the world chance before I think he even hit the post one. So um, the draw probably probably good, but it was not a good result for Dortmund. It was not a good result for Köln. There were two losers right there. The Bremen Wolfsburg game was rather un unexciting. Still, there were three goals scored. I mean, Jeff Sarge with a wonderful on goal, uh, the back of his head. Uh, really weird. And then Wout Weghorst, of course, after a nice Schlag assist, but Kevin Möwald, with more or less the first chance for, for Bremen, gets it to 1-2, and then Wolfsburg hangs on. I mean, this was the first goal the wall Wolfsburg has conceded in a long time. Also, the jersey match, although I like both jerseys, I think it was not the, luck, the luckiest one. Uh, two, two dark ones, both with greenish accent there. Not the best, but you know, that's a different story. Um, 
Bremen gave it the best to get the equalizer, but they just could could to find. They had a few few chances, but then uh, 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 Wolfsburg was over the better team. And it ends 2-1 for Wolfsburg. Uh, Late on, Gladbach stops the slide with a 3-0 over Schalke. Uh, but you know, every we win it against Schalke. Then uh, the early game on Sunday, Mainz beating Hoffenheim away from home. That was also rather un un unexpected. And speaking of unexpected, although maybe not, Hertha has been playing not that badly as of late, but didn't get the results. Leverkusen have been really, really in rough shape, and it's similar to last season. They've played the first half really well, and then there is the fall off, and the drop off here was really ugly now. Uh, they're losing 3 0 to Hertha, and it was already 3 0 at the half. We see Foyk, uh, or in the fourth minute, getting a really nicely taken goal. I mean, that, that was a nice sh uh, shot. Uh, Luca Barker with the assist, who also is, assists in the Kunde 22nd, and Cor uh, Cor Cordoba with after Guendouzi Gw assist, gets the third. Um, there was not much coming for Leverkusen, who had one chance where. Uh, Patrick Schick decided, yeah, I'm not gonna shoot on goal. I just look at my partner. Uh, who, which partner there? That was the chance. Uh, there was another Simpson row in the second half, but uh, at that point it was uh, more, more or less Leverkusen Le Le resigned themselves. Luka Baki would have scored a fourth, but there was a handball in the build-up. And it could have been 4-0, if not 5-0, uh, because Le Leverkusen gave themselves so up. I have to say Peter Bosch is definitely on the out. And then Freiburg beats Augsburg 2-0. So uh, in the standings, that means yeah, still Bayern four points clear of Leipzig. We, we have the head-to-head -head right after the international break. Uh, the two of them are the class of, of the league. Wolfsburg and Frankfurt at the moment looking rather safe in the Champions League spots. Uh, Dortmund four points behind Frankfurt. They are also playing very, very, very soon against the, each, each other. So that will be a, a match to look forward to that will go a long way of deciding where things go. In the relegation zone, um, Hertha with a big boost getting themselves out of trouble, only 11% now. Mainz getting out of the relegation zone. I mean, uh, a few months ago we thought Schalke and then Mainz are the worst teams in the league. Mainz really turned around. They had a big rise and they are picking up the points. Köln is the one where I'm a little bit, they can turn it on, but most of the time they turn it off. And so I'm a little bit wor worried, although I th they're still better than, I feel they're better than Bielefeld. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the current coach, but I think he's probably going to get the sack rather soon. And uh, it would be a little bit of a shame. And also it's a little bit of a shame that a big team like Köln, and Köln is a big team in Germany, is all the way down there. Um, we don't have to adjust, so let's go straight to the expected standings. Uh, tells the story that we had before. We have one, two, three are pretty clear, I would say, uh, with maybe Wolfsburg more in a fight, but Wolfsburg seems rather safe for the uh, Champions League spot, and Leipzig has a very teeny tiny chance of getting, getting ahead of Bayern. Uh, Dortmund might catch Frankfurt, but it doesn't look very, very likely, and Leverkusen is also break, breaking off. And then the midfield, I don't, uh, despite Le Leverkusen being in bad shape, I don't really think that any of the other teams below there can really catch them. Uh, potentially, potentially Gladbach, but I think they are also too much in troubles uh, for themselves. As for the bottom, yes, Hertha is probably the first, first team where I say there's a relegation threat, um, but it's really Mainz and Köln and Bielefeld that one will go down, one will play the relegation promotion playoff, and the other one is saved. And that will go down, down the wire. After the international break, we have Dortmund Frankfurt. Huge game, huge game. We have Leipzig Bayern, even bigger game, and we have a Berlin Derby. I mean, boy, what do you want more? It will be a wonderful, great round. We also have Mainz against Bielefeld, another absolute huge game. So, uh, if that goes the wrong way, current could, could be well, well in the relegation spots because they have to play against Wolfsburg. But uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, round and I'm already low looking forward to because I think there are great games all around. And we have again one, two, three, four games at 3.30 and uh, two of which have huge implications. And we have Bayern Leipzig. This will be a German weekend. I can already smell it. Let's go to Austria. Um, Lask Salzburg. It's one of those damning things. Lask put Salzburg to, to the brink, had a had, had chance, but with the first shot on goal, Pats and Daka scores. And it was uh, an error in the build-up. 
Wenn Andrade loses the ball, Christensen can cro cro then cross it in and Trauner doesn't come, come, come out to head it out of danger and it falls to uh, da Daka and it's 1-0. Well, South Salzburg's last should have scored a goal. They scored, got him a goal, but it was not rightfully not, not given for offside. And then, you know, as long as the game went, went on, the last power they, they could put, so I'm all black back there because last lost. Uh, they have shown that they can hang in there with Salzburg quite well. On the other side, this was probably the least important game against Sal Salzburg all season. We have a cup final against them, so maybe it would be a good time to pick up the points there. Let's go for the spot, you know, we have this, we have to, this was not the last round of the rare regular season. Uh, the League of 12 will be in two six-team leagues, the top six play then against each other, the bottom six. And the points are halved, which is, we'll talk about that. But for the fifth and sixth spot, there was still a race. Wolfsburg secured their spot relatively safely, although they found themselves down to Austria Wien. In the seventh, however, Lochoschwili, uh, Röcher and Jovelic by the halftime headed at 3-1. Lindel make, may, makes it even 4 4 1 in the 53rd. Then Austria come, come, comes back uh, through Grünwald and Zeck in the 66 and 78 to make it 3 4, pushing for, for the equalizer, but then a car caught on the counter and Wiesinger makes it 5 3. Eight goal game, pretty exciting. But uh, there were also eight goals in the other two games, but there was even more excitement there. Um, Hartberg needed to better whatever Tyrol is doing. That was the, the get-go. So if Tyrol is losing, Hartberg needs a draw. If uh, Tyrol is uh, drawing, Hartberg needs a win. If Tyrol is winning, they are safe. Tyrol had to play against Rapid, Hartberg against St. St. Burton. So far from, from the get-go, Rapid, um, yeah, uh, one of the top three teams in Austria. St. Burton, a team that did not have much to play for. It was not really good. So uh, I really thought that Hartberg has a good shot there. However... They actually hurt themselves. I mean, Tyrol hung in with Rapid very, very uh, well. Rapid had more of, of the game, more chances, but Tyrol held them for most of the time at bay. Hartberg gets in the 30th a clear hands penalty. I mean, the uh, St. Burton player is falling down and the ball hits him. Tadic, he's, I don't think any relations to the Tadic or Ajax, steps up and the, ball, and the penalty is saved. And it was even worse, 10 minutes later, Ljubicic makes a 1-0 for St. Pölten, which at that point was not even that undeserved, to be honest. So going into the half, it is Hartberg out, Tyrol in with a point more. Uh, however, this would not stop anything. Uh, the next few ag ag actions we have to talk, talk about are all in Hartberg, where uh, Nimaga gets the equalizer, but just around from, 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 from kick of Booth, Makes it 2-1 for St. St. Burton, but Hartberg fight themselves back in the 73rd minute. They get the equalizer to Chubby. Then, Rapid in the 74th takes the lead. Arase. In that moment, Hartberg is through. Tyrol losing, Hartberg having a dead draw. Uh, Hartberg even doubles up on, on the lead through Horvath, uh, who makes it 3-2-4 for, for them, and it seems like they're absolutely cruising. Um... Still seems to be cruising when Anselm in the 84th gets, uh, I think it was one of the rare shots on goal for Tyrol, gets uh, the, the equalizer for Tyrol, who are now hoping that St. Burton somehow, somehow will put out an e equalizer where Rapid shouldn't score a goal. And in both cases, the 94th minute. Uh, it, it, it's so much time. A penalty is given for Rapid. While the penalty is in the moment, uh, uh, about to be executed, St. Burton scores the equalizer. So everything hinges now on that penalty for Rapid, which is saved. Absolute, absolute madness. And with all this madness, the top six table, uh, regular season standings final, is now that Wolfsburg and Tyrol stay in and Hartberg is out by a single point and by a goal that they didn't need to give up and by a penalty that should not have been saved. I mean, there were two missed penalties in both games that would have turned things around for Hartberg. Um, Austria Wien, as I said, is pre were pre pre pretty much out of, out of, out of it. And now the fun starts. Uh, it will be split in two leagues and the points are halved with if the points are level at the end of the, of, of the season, a team that had uh, rounded down. So uh, that is kept as a tiebreaker just in case. And so we go into the league with uh, Salzburg being 
four points ahead of Rapid and five points ahead of Lask. Very much uh, favorites to uh, win the title. Uh, Rapid and Lask battle it out for the last Champions League uh, uh, playoff spot. Um, and then, yeah, there are a bunch of Europa League and Conference League spots that uh, we don't have to bother too much about. Uh, and in the second league, Hart. Hartberg has now only a two-point advantage over Austria. And in the relegation battle, it's, it seems like a two-way race between Ried and uh, Admira. Games are only against each other, so it will be rather, rather interesting. We don't know uh, yet uh, what the next round will be. But here the expected final standings uh, were Salzburg clearly ahead of Rapid and Lask, which is pretty much a head-to-head. -head. Lask having a slightly higher rating, but Rapid going in with a, a little bit advantage, a uh, uh, cushion on points. Um, Tirol, of course, rank outsiders there. And the most important thing is that the sixth place team cannot go into Europe. There is a chance, however, for the winner of the um, uh, qualification round uh, to go into a playoff where then, you know, uh, they play the fifth, uh, the fifth place team or the fourth place team and there's the cup winner also, all, all, also in there, so seven and eight because it's Rapid, uh, it's Salzburg against Lask, so probably seven against eight, play one and then they play against the fifth place team for the final spot. It's a crazy system. We don't need to talk much about, but yeah, uh, that will start uh, uh, before the Easter weekend after the international international break. So yeah, let me know what you thought about all these games. So many goals, so much fun. It, it was really fun. If you're if you're interested in these two leagues, it was a really really fun weekend. Unless you're like me, a Lask fan, it was definitely not. And I still I was so excited about Stuttgart being uh, ahead of Clark Club in the, in the expected standings, and then. Those guys, yeah, whatever. But you know, I'm excited about Frankfurt and Wolfsburg because there's the former last coach as well. So it's not all, all bad, but it was really exciting action and that's the most important. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.